Hello everyone, welcome to Javelin Technologies video on freeform modeling in SOLIDWORKS industrial design. In this video I will be covering the basic tools in the freeform tab. If there is a tool I didn't cover you can press F1 in industrial design and you will be given extra help on how to use the command. To begin, insert your desired shape. Here I'll be inserting a cylinder. Once placed, you have the option to adjust the number of loops. The greater number of loops, the more granular control over the geometry. Note that loops can be added or deleted at a later point as well. The basic tools you will use in freeform are the extrude faces, insert loops, subdivide faces, and crease edges tool. The rest of the tools are more advanced, so we will not be covering them in this video. You may prefer to view the cage by selecting the Show Mesh Cage button on the top right. The selector tool can save a lot of time as it allows you to select entire loops rather than having to select individually. But for the time being, let's leave it on any entities. As you probably have guessed by now, you can easily manipulate the shape by choosing mesh points, faces, or edges and dragging the triad. The white circle allows you to reposition the triad for different focal points when you rotate and translate your shape. The gray circles allow you to increase the size of your object in different directions. If you would like to use two or more directions at a time, simply click the gray circles you would like to use and they'll turn white. Then you can drag the gray circle and all of the selected dimensions will increase together. By now you must have noticed the ruler tool. This is very useful when you know the length that you need to extrude an object. Just hover your mouse over the ruler and it will snap to the points. If you're on the small side, you automatically snap to the smaller increments, but if you're on the larger side, then you snap to the larger increments. A great deal of your design work will be manipulating this mesh to mold it to your desired shape. But there are a few tools that are critical that you need to be aware of. The Extrude Faces tool basically allows you to add a face onto another mesh point. By clicking your desired extrude and double clicking off the object, it will apply the extrusion. If you press Escape, it will also apply the extrusion, however, you will have to reselect the Extrude Faces button to continue using it. By playing around with this button more, you will begin to get a feel for the capabilities it has. For example, creating a hole by connecting two extrusions together. To create a hole, two and only two mesh points should be selected. Similarly, to create a bridge, two and only two mesh points which do not have material between them can be selected. If you would like more granular control in an area, then you have the option to insert loops or subdivide faces. Inserting loops adds a new segment to the cage. It can be easier to see if you have the show mesh cage turned on. You can also delete a loop if you want to simplify an area. The Subdividing Faces button adds additional mesh points to a single face of mesh, making it easier to add some detail to it. Finally, the last thing I would like to show you on this video is the Crease Edges button. This one is very useful as well. It is used to sharpen your object. There is a slider that you can use to determine how sharp you want the crease to be, which is very useful. You will use this in almost every one of your projects as no design is complete without some sort of aesthetically pleasing detail. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to the next video in the series, Parametric Features. If you found this video useful, don't forget to share it and give us a thumbs up. Also, if you are not already, please subscribe to be notified when we upload more useful videos to this channel. Thank you.